a Cards with Michael production. All right, everyone, Cards with Michael back with another VIP case opening. And uh, let's do some randomization, some shuffling of the slips. And all right, first we have Lenny with two VIPs, which then means we need to find who's next. Uh, Greg and Tom to fill out that inner case. All right, let's get to it. So we got a funny one today. Look at this. <laughs> the tape is all sideways. All right, let's get to open it. Uh, the VIP borderless index has remained relatively steady. Um, we're still in the high 2390s. Uh, if you have been following with me, awesome. If you haven't, feel free to look at my price updates in my little Google spreadsheet. I should probably tweet about it, to be honest. I think that would be the next thing. Um, in fact, you know, I've decided I will start tweeting about it. It's just a fun little thing that I've been tracking. I'm really curious, right? Like, are these things going to hold up value or, or are they not? Like, everyone wants to know that, right? Um, and uh, what better way to do it than straight up opening or straight up price checking every few... Uh, do it, like, every, like... Uh, half day or so um, and you know it's it's cool like for example even though the index has relatively remained stable like some cards have gone up and some cards have gone down of course latest the latest bull run has been the sword of feast and famine like, that card it has legs it has legs i spoke to some guys who play a lot of banner and they're like yeah we see it being more valuable than sword of fire nice and that's like totally makes sense all right lenny first two vips for you these are the comeback vips right these are the uh, the, the, the tilt VIPs, I think you called them earlier. All right, let's, let's, let's do it. Let's get you the goods. All right, here we go. Comments. And here we come with our uncommons, buried rune, of course, dismantle, the ritual, Statue, Familiar, Awakening Zone, Foil Rare, not bad, not bad. Reshape, Foil Rare, and our first Foil Borderless card is a Thoughtseize, right? Oh man, I'm gonna miss these arts, to be honest, when we start moving on to Zenikar. I don't know, I, I think that they did an awesome job. All right, and what's next? Martina Pilsaroiva with a Mox Opal, ding, ding, ding. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Nice little mythic hit there. And, uh, whoa. What is this? A Dawn Double John Avon. Foil Plains and Swamp. And a Human Soldier token. Servo. And a Mere Wolf. All right. All right. On to the next one for Lenny. It's still crazy to me that prices have remained stable. I think there's a real demand for these foil borderless cards. I can't speak the same thing for the foil rares and foil potential mythics. Oh man, twice as nice. Um, but uh, I will say, you know, it really does seem like people want these cards. They're super nice. I mean, like, who, who went? Like, at the end of the day, these feel like a more accessible uh, mythic edition. Do um, you guys know what I mean? Like, the, the ooh, a little Urza's Mine, nice little value, ding, ding, ding. Um, you know those mythic editions, Ravnica, War of the Spark, and that, those kind of goodies? Um, I think, uh, yeah, I think that, um, oh, Obliet, that's what these foil borderless cards are, and Lightning Greaves, and these Uncommons will definitely hold up value, though, that, that, that is for sure. Well of Ideas are first rare, all right? And our second one, a Sharoom, the Hegemon, all right? And what is our first foil borderless card? A Ron Spencer Brainstorm, all right? I get excited when I see a Brainstorm. It's usually, like, Academy Runes, um, after, but sometimes... Sometimes you get a Mark. Oh no, a Mark Teton Urza's mine. Oh boy, Lenny, I can feel I feel some more tilt openings happening soon. <laughs> All right, it wasn't too bad. All right, this wasn't as bad as last time. I feel it wasn't too shabby at all. Ah, nice. Got a little island and a clue mirror and a wolf worm. What worm is this? This is number thirty at the one of life link. All right, all right. Those are the two, two vips for you. Let's get this sleeving. I think also uh, 
it's crazy to me that the, the Urza lands are still maintaining value. And um, at this point, I'm just thinking, dude, I think stonks. <laughs> stonks. I, I mean, I don't know. Like, you know, if you if you really want to collect them, you it feels bad to just have like one of these. So getting all four would be so much sweeter. You know what I mean? All right. Next, we have brothers Greg and Tom. Greg, will open yours first. See what we can snag. All right. Let's do it. Do it. All right. Here we go. Our uncommons. And Onaganata, Ash Barons, Sphinx, Pure Steel Paladin, Condra's Closet. All right, what's our first borderless card? Okay, got a Fatal Push. All right, all right. And to top things off for Greg, I know you wanted the Force of Will, and it's possible to get one after this card. We've seen it happen. Oh, gosh. Greg! Greg! Oh! Oh, oh, no. <laughs> that was close. You know, when I see Scott and Fisher, I think of only one thing, and it's not you. Sorry, I'm Ka sorry, Kalia. But still, Kalia is very sweet. Um, You know, just from a market watch perspective, Kalia has not been creeping up or creeping down. It just seems kind of, you know, kind of there. But still, look at that art. Can you see? Can, I mean, it's just, the art is so amazing. It truly captures the fact that she's like, you know, one with the angels, demons, and dragons. Right? All right. Okay. That was a close one. Uh, that was a close one. All right. We have a foil planes. Is that even a foil? It's kind of hard to tell. And a human soldier, germ, golem wolf. All right. All right. Let's give these some sleeves and go to Tom. last VIP of this inner case. Uh, the inner case has been, you know, decent, I would say. Um, obviously, it's hard to say at this point, actually, because I don't know. It's just each individual VIP's potential is so high. Like, the, the fail case is so low. Is not even that low, sorry, but the, the upside is super high on these. So, early to say if we got a bad inner case or not. All it takes is a flip of a card. All right, here we go. Baleful Strix is our first rare. Whoa, a Sword of Feast and Famine at this might be one of the most valuable mythics out there. Just second to like Mana Crypt and Force of Will, of course. But oh, geez, nice. And a, oh, and a Stoneforge Mystic. I think we already paid for the, the pack. All right, that means this inner case is pretty good because I mean, what was it? Metamorph, that would be like the worst. Mark Zub coming in with a mythic, all right? A dark confidant. Okay, okay. That is not too shabby at all. It's not too shabby at all. All right, and we got our foil lands. Got a foil mountain, shapeshifter, elemental, and a servo treasure token. All right, let's give you some sleeves. Not bad, not bad. Definitely, definitely not bad. All right. Well, what do we got here? Leave up some, some cards for Tom, and we're on to the next inner case. All right, let's see who it is for. It is for Casey, and then let's just see what Christy and Jason A is last. All right, Casey. Ah. Okay, the next inner case for Casey. Come on. Four vips. Let's see how we can do. Let's see how we do. Hmm? Oh, 
missed the, the side I was supposed to be opening. All right. VIP number one for Casey. There's this tower, nice little foil value card, of course. Uh, the foil commons, that's really the only cards that have value right now, over a dollar, the foil Urza lands. And we have our first rare, a Council's Judgment, right? and a Wrath of God with that clean, clean, both black border, Kev Walker, his little signature here, and of course that clean text, very clean. All right, and here we have an Urza's Power Plant. These are one of the better hits, uh, above average, above median, in the, uh, the foil rare slot, that first foil borderless card. And second we have, oh, Scott M. Fisher again. Oh my gosh. Casey, did we? It's number 340! Oh, oh my goodness! Hello. We are no stranger to this this card, but every time we do pull one, oh my goodness, it's nice. It is a great feeling. Oh wow. Amazing. Alright. And we have a foil mountain here, an elf warrior plant, and a ooze germ token not too shabby not too shabby we'll give this no let's I, I like i like using resealable sleeves we'll, we'll do that with this one these are my favorite cards to resealable sleeve the ones that are worth you know like rent all right we'll rent you know for like a day if you're living in new york city all right <laughs> oh nice little pull right there Give it a little, give the VIP treatment. Let's grab one of these, these little boxes. Look at that. Look at that. Not too shabby at all, eh? And uh, this this power plant, I'll give it a little sleeve as well. All right. And uh, it's like an achievement unlocked already with that first VIP. And we do have more. Let's get to it. There's this power plant, nice little common value again. And uh, nothing else in the, oop. whoa, whoa, whoa. That was a bit of a oopsies. We have a Grim Lava Mancer here. And a Riku of Two Reflections, a foil mythic. This is one of the more valuable ones coming out like, I think 15, but I think it has high potential. I mean, there's very few copies of Riku, all right, or very few printings of it. All right, no, got a meddling mage, all right. What is next? Wayne Reynolds, aha, coming into our favorite Mr. Blightsteel. Look at that. All right, got old Mythic again. Not too shabby at all, not too shabby at all. And of course we got a Foil Island, a Soldier Copy Worm Ooze. All right, sleevey sleeve time. Melly Mage, of course, is the least valuable Foil Borderless card possible, so. I'm just gonna put it right behind that force of will. It is literally getting eaten up by that force of will. It truly is. Like the reason why the EV of these are high is because force of will pays for four of these, whereas meddling mage, you know, <laughs> it's just uh, not a real card. All right. Now, how else are we gonna do? Or how many other goodies are we gonna get? Casey, okay, so I feel like you know we've already we've already, we've already gotten what we needed. <laughs> So everything at this point is just gravy, right? It's just value. Oh, got a little lightning greaves, all right? The Hulk, Dread Return, Mystic Gate. Okay, and then Oblivion Stone. Council's Judgment. And what is this? Jim Pavlet coming in with a Blood Moon. So quite a weak pack to follow up the Blood Moon one. Uh, the Force of Will one, of course. And a nice little island, of course. Soldier, Servo, and a Human Soldier with a golem token all right sleep up these foil borderless cards just realize the camera does not capture the foil borderless cards and um all right one last vip left for you casey Let's see what we can get 
Let's see what we can get. Here are our uncommons. Tuck Tuck the Explorer. What a funny card. Oh man. All right. And whoa! Casey <laughs> and a foil mana crypt to boot. Oh man, that's good. That is really good. Look at that. Gorgeous. Jeez. All right. I mean, that's just how that's how we roll, right? Anticyclonic Rift, now this has been creeping up. People realize, wait, every blue deck wants one in EDH. Oh my gosh, and it's a light-colored Martinian coming over with Karn Daddy. Oh boy, look at that. Wow, what a VIP inner case. I mean, that was a good one. That was definitely a good one. Oh my gosh. A little Flying Thopters number eight. Copy token and a Golem Ape. All right. Well, I don't even know. That's That's insane to me. That we also got a mana crypt, a foil mythic mana crypt. Ah, oh, goodness gracious. Casey, you came back with a vengeance. I know you didn't like the first one we opened for you, but this one? Insanely good. Sorry, that was just me getting a new pack of sleeves. Ran out. Sent you some more. These are, of course, KMC sleeves. Um, perfect fits. These are my favorite go-to for YouTube openings. Um, they're a little nice. They're, they're snug, but they're not like super snugs to the point where um, I can sleeve on camera relatively fast. And yep, they're inner sleeves, so I do sleeve them backwards with the expectation that if you are sleeving, you are sleeving them uh, again, right side up. All right, gorgeous, beautiful. Oh wait, let's sleeve the, this Riku of, as of course, because um, cards like that still worth a sleeve. All right. Well, <laughs> that was a good, that was a good one. I gotta say, no one's gonna dispute that. And uh, put that to the side. Casey, of course, nice work. And we'll go to Christy. All right. All right. Inner case for Christy. Let's get to opening. Once again, we have seen, uh, I believe already twice on video, uh, either video or live stream, where we've had two uh, Force of Wills being opened. So it's not impossible. Um, we had that one in our case that literally was like two Jaces. That was a good one too. So I'll hope it's not gone yet. Although it is definitely less likely. I'll give you that. But still, what a fun time opening VIPs fun journey for you guys to kind of be with me as we open these back to back to back to back. Ooh, a little Urza's Mind there. Nice little value card. And here we go. Disciple. Pongify, also a nice little value card. Oh, Naganata. This Mantle. Esper Zoa. Mir Smith. And a Sharoom the Hegemon, followed up by a Foil Endless Atlas. All right. Here's our first Foil Borderless card. A Urza's Power Plant. And what's after that? Kev Walker coming in with a Atroxa Praetor's Voice. All right, all right. That's super spicy. That's super spicy. And of course, we have a Foil Forest here and a Thopter number eight again. Squirrel and a Servo Shapeshifter. All right. Let me grow the sleeves out of the little thingy and uh, start sleeving these guys up too. What is next? We got another three more VIPs. I think, you know, power plant plus like an Atroxa, that is like, like, it's just basically that's it. Like all the other cards are just nice little, like nice little value bits. Um, the VIPs basically paid for it, you know? All right. Wouldn't it be crazy if there was like something super rare? Like, I think like magic, like, oh, you know, like, like Lilian, like a, like a foil alt art Liliana, like a multiplier in that is so insane. Like there are, 
I'm just surprised there's not more cards like that, you know? That would really sell packs. Something like so rare. Oh, got a Pongify again. Nice little value card. Oh, it's a Path to Exile. Ding, ding, ding. Cards that have, you know, real tangible amounts of value. Oh, and then, speaking of which, we have a Noble Hierarch. And that's, this used to be so expensive. And finally, this reprint has made it much more accessible. Oh my gosh. And a Mox Opal. So many free mana, uh, mana rocks in this. Oh man. All right, we'll take it. Coming in with a Phyrexian Metamorph. Boo. All right, but our last one is a Mark Teton coming in with a tower. Okay. That was not the best, but that, you know, foil Mox Opal definitely helps. Oh, another double John Avon. So, okay. I'll draw a spawn plant and a copy cat token. Wow, wow. So planes and swamp in that one. Now, we don't see that happen too often. Um, it's usually one John Avon, one Noah Bradley. But when it does happen, I find in the same case, it happens more often. Uh, it ha it'll happen multiple times. Like um, one of our other openings, uh, I think we kept getting two Noel Bradley foil basics, which, you know, sad. But uh, at first I didn't think that was a thing. But now that I've seen it happen to my own eyes, I can assure you, it just seems like normal sequence of events. All right, here we go. We have a Rex Sage. Oh, wait, that's not a rare. Oopsies. We have a Pentad Prism. The Hulk. All right. And here we go. First rare is a Fire Lit Thicket. Look at those little gobos. And a Maze of Ith Foil. All right. That's really solid. Really solid. And a Council's Judgment. All right. All right. And what is this? Jim Pavlik coming in with a Blood Moon. Okay, all right. Uh, okay, Christy, we need that last pack to be a, a home run. Okay, got a foil mountain here, an elf warrior treasure, elf warrior germ, sorry, and beast treasure token. All right, let's see, what can we get in this last one? Well, so far, only one mythic. Um, not exactly the most exciting thing to happen, <laughs> uh, but uh, we have seen one mythic in their cases. So it is possible. Just would not be great. All right. Here we go. Oops. I always miscount on the uncommons because there's eight of them. Mana Reflection. All right. Foil Mana Reflection. That is pretty good. That is not bad at all. Oh, man. It's that. And this is fun art, but too, by Chris Seaman. And a greater good foil. All right, all right. Okay, here we go. What's next? Jeff Simpson. No, no, we don't want to see more Jeff Simpsons. Okay, so this is a duplicate on Council's Judgment, which is not, not what we want to see. Ron Spencer. Wow. Gee whiz, Chris. I'm so sorry. That was back to back, not winners. Um, did get a foil swamp and a soldier squirrel mirror clue token. Oh, that, no throne. That was, oh man, when I saw Ron Spencer in that slot, I was, was sure we were going to get, at least get a mana crypt in this inner case. Jeez. Ah, uh, oh man, like, I, you know, I, I'm still high on VIP as, as a product. And I think that, um, when you buy a sealed case of 16, uh, at, at anywhere close to like retail, which right now I see on TCG is like, you know, 1680. Um, I, I really truly feel like on average, assuming you don't get, you know, dinged by variants like a ton, like in this case, this inner case, um, you will come out ahead even with some fees on transactions and stuff. Like I just, I just truly feel that way. But uh, inner cases like this, you know, definitely do diminish that confidence. So, Christy, those are your four. I apologize. We can get there. Um, thank you so much for sponsoring. And I hope to get you on the next one. All right, Jason, the last inner case. All right, we just saw, we saw a really good inner case. And we saw a really bad inner case. So, what will this one be? Let's watch the video and find out. Speaking of which, while well, I'm talking about the video, um, if you like these type of videos, please give it a like. Um, we work hard.
to add prices to do these recordings with the, uh, I don't know, lighting. And you know, just overall the logistics of making these happen. And uh, if you like this kind of stuff, your likes are free for you to do, but uh, do actually help us in terms of metrics. Um, do, and does help the channel in you know, many ways actually. So you might think it doesn't really do much, but I promise you every like adds up. So if that is your thing, please consider just giving it a like. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. I assume you like box openings and we'll do more. I mean, when Zenicard hits, we'll be doing a ton of that. Mesmeric Orb, Maelstrom Pulse, Toxic Deluge. All right, what is our first potential mythic? Hey, look at that. An Avacyn, Angel of Hope. It's Shining Glory. I'm a fan. I am a fan. All right, and a Foil Swamp and Treasure Token. Treasure Mirror, ooh, it's a nice mirror. What is this mirror? No, 007? Mirror James Bond. <laughs> All right. And what's it? The cat? Cat mirror. That's the other mirror, right? Mirror 24. All right. Let's give these a sleeve. Of course, Avacyn is one of the recent winners as well, it turns out. Art is amazing. Card is amazing. And uh, definitely has appeal outside of play. You know, th those are the definitely the cards that are the most important. Like Force of Wills, right? Like, how many of those Force of Wills do you truly think are being played right now? Not many. It's a very collector slash slash investor driven market um not a uh competitor driven market if that makes sense like you'll know when something's a competitive dri driven market um when before a tournament now i'm saying before okay before a tournament certain cards are going up in value um a lot of that is because competitors need to buy those cards and uh they gotta go you know online tcg player whatever go buy those cards after a tournament you'll see a lot of prices go up. And that's, I think, is a secondary market. People making gambles, going like, oh, that card did so well in the tournament. Hey, Hammer of Nizan, not bad. Academy Runes, eh. And what do we got here? We got a Mark Zug, Mythic. Hey, a little Dark Confidant here. All right, all right. Not terrible fan of how the art does cut off. It, I do like that he's trying new things. So I'll give him that. And it is very intricate, very detailed, very Orzovian. But uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, like I was saying, after a tournament, if certain cards do really well, ooze, mirror, that double seven mirror, a plant treasure. Um, you know, people do buy up cards on TCG Player, Card Kingdom, all your all your big places. Uh, you know, if there's a foil mythic or sorry, a mythic that did really well, um, I do see that type of uh, you know speculation, so to speak. Um, but overall. Uh, I don't, you know, that's not that's not what's going to drive the demand for these cards. Like, it's not like someone's going to have a deck that has four copies of Avacyn, and that's going to be the reason why Avacyn spikes. It's going to be just slowly people want it for EDH. Um, some people can't afford those decks right now, and they're they're going to upgrade slowly as they save more money. So, um, you know, it is a fun market to watch, and that's why I've been watching foil borderless prices since August 11th. And once again, the link to that spreadsheet is in the description. So do check that out. All right. Oh, nice little power plant. Haven't seen a foil common of value or foil Urzalan of value in a bit. I estimate there's about like, like two bucks per inner case. So usually about two of those foil inners, uh, foil Urzalans. And here is our first, the Urzal's mine. All right, there's a lot of Urzalans in this uh, case so far and Kev Walker coming in with a sword of light and shadow. All right All right, not not bad at all And here we go with a foil forest and a sapperling angel Servo treasure token. All right, the last VIP of the day um, Oh, yeah, and then one thing I did want to update for all those all you diligent watchers uh, Zedekar set boosters are I don't know we saw 105, we saw, like, Game Nerds was, like, the cheapest I've ever seen coming in at 99, 90-something 90 for retail, all right? Oh, Basalt Monolith. But ever since then, like, I see the price consensus now seems like 129.99. That's $30 more, 30% more. Set boosters, oh, man. Hey! <laughs> 
Hello, Mr. Imperial Recruiter. What is going on? All right, and then we have a Noble Hierarch. All right, all right. And a Jess Simpson to end things off. No! No! All right. It is what it is. Uh, Zenikar set boosters, look. I mean, Elf Warrior, Mir, Germ Human Soldier. I'm... I'm struggling to get a hold of large allocations of it, and I don't know. If you if you run a store, you probably are hearing the same thing. So we're all like, you know, breath abated, kind of figuring, trying to figure out what is going on, what happened. Like we didn't think that there would be a short supply of that stuff, right? Like they'll definitely print more, right? But I guess they're they're gauging the market and they'd rather undersupply and then you know get a premium later. Maybe I don't know. Murmur, murmur, murmur. I want to get more Zenikars. Um, set boosters but it's looking tough it's gonna be like i don't know if, if i guess if stores don't get enough then they're willing to sell them at a higher price and then if all stores do that yeah the price is gonna go up all right so jason that was your inner case uh we did get a forcible all this case so no matter what i'm willing to bet the prices do add up um other news of course we are live streaming uh friday at around 7 p.m eastern uh, some more packs are available as we speak. So if you are watching the video and got to this point, and you're like, yeah, I want to sponsor something. I think it's like Japanese War, Iconic Masters, and Mystery Boosters are a lot. And uh, with that being said, that is the video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Give it a like if you haven't already. Subscribe. Get some more of this goodies. And see you on the next one.